everybody, what's going on? This is the Iceman. Interviews with the Iceman. I'm very excited today, man. I got my man, Lance Stinson. How are you, brother? I'm great, yes, man. How you doing? I'm doing good as always, man. Pleasure to talk to you and pleasure to play in the, the rotation. You know, I say that all the time. And, well, I uh, appreciate you doing it. Thank you, and, sure. and I'm, I'm happy to be able to talk to you just to let the fans know, you know, because I get a ton of requests for your songs, and uh, just to let them know a little about you, where you're from, where you're going, and, uh, you know, like I say, man, you're going to be one of the ones in 2015 to watch. I've been saying that for a while. Well, we, you know, it, uh, there's a lot of people involved that keeps this thing going, man. You know, it, yeah, it's my name, and uh, but uh, I got some good people in our in our court, and I think 2015 is going to be our year. You that's d- for sure. You definitely do. That's so, sure. so tell me. Let Let's start from the beginning. Not from the doctor slap when you were born, but maybe a little ahead of that. We, <laughs> tell Tell everybody where were you from? I'm from Lumber City, Georgia. Is where I'm from. A little bit small town, way down south. At uh, I'm about 30 miles west of Vidalia. Is where I'm at. About two hours north of Savannah. Is where I'm at. And so you, that's where you grew up and born. You're still living there. Yeah, pretty much there. My, my mom and dad run a restaurant there, and we live. We, we were born and raised about about seven miles out of town there. But uh, the restaurant's there, and that's pretty much where we spent most of our life at. You know, working there, <clears throat> and uh, good hard work, good hard working family. That's, that's for sure. That's what that's what it's about, man. You know that, and, it, and oh, it, absolutely. It, you, you could tell that you know you you took those values because you do the same thing with your music, man. I just see you working it and and in the studio and making things happen, and and you can tell that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Well, they they put those values in there, and thank God that I have a family that did, you know. And uh, but you know, it's always what you get out, what you put in it, you know. If right. you want something bad enough, you got to work for it. Right. You know, there ain't nothing right. easy in this world. No, no, that's it. You know? hard, hard work. Now, tell, Lance, how, when did you get started in music? How, what, what got well, you started? How old were you? I started were you? singing uh, in church and at a Christmas play that we were having when I was eight years old. And uh, and I just loved singing ever since then. I actually loved it before then. And, but then when I was in high school, and I had three friends of mine that are also loved to play music. One a couple played guitar and one played drums. And we started a little band at school. And when we were 14 and 15, and the man has just been playing music with a band ever since. Has it always been country, or was it country when you, when well, you did that? It's always been country. Country's always been there. You know, country's what I was raised on, and that's what I love. You know, we played a little southern rock and, you know, some Bon Jovi stuff, but, you know, it, it was mostly all your, you know, classic country stuff with a little southern rock. Right. Wow. Okay, and, and what about, you know, family? Do you, you have siblings? Yeah, I have four, I have four, I have four older brothers is what I have. Well, you're the young and, one. Uh, you're the young guy. I'm, I'm the youngest one. I'm the one that I'm the one that I got beat up by all four of them. <laughs> yeah, but but now are any of them musicians? No, none of them are. None of them are. You know, my brother that's uh, 18 months older than me. We uh, I kind of begged him when we were kids to try to get him to do something, but he just didn't have any interest in doing it. And I got an aunt that plays piano. I used to love when we'd go over to her house when we were kids and she'd play piano and sing. And, and that's pretty much it in, in my family, in my immediate family, real close family. That's me and her is about the only one. Right, right. Now, who who were your musical influences growing up? Oh, there's tons of them. Uh, I guess you had to say my biggest influence was Keith Whitley. I, I've loved his music, always have loved it. Uh, but, you know, you had the Merle, the Don Williams, uh, you know, all right on down the line. And then my brothers, you know, they were, they had two brothers that were 14 years older than me, and they liked all the hair band stuff, you know, mm-hmm. Bon Jovi, Metallica, and Death Leopard. So I kind of had a little mix coming up growing up listening to all of them. Wow. You know? Wow, okay. All right, we're going to get to our first song. This song, man, I tell you, on my top 40 list seems like forever. It hit number one and, and got number one again. It was the first number one you had. It's Tail Lights and Dust. Tell us a little about the song. That song was written by Dean Sands, which is, uh, is uh, the piano player for Long Star. I'm sure if y'all have heard of that, that little group, you know, they're not very big now. Mm-hmm. You know, but... <laughs> yeah, we, we we were in the studio over at Curb, and, and the guys produced my record with me. Tom Drennan's friends with with, with, with Dean, and uh, he said, uh, you know, we were out looking for songs, and we were trying to write some, you know, more upbeat kind of fun songs. And and he said, man, here's one, you know, let him listen to this one. And that's how it come about. I heard the song, and I said, man, I got to cut that. I love it. Well, and, I tell, uh, that's yeah. what we did. Well, I tell you what, man, it it had a lot of legs on the the top forty, getting up to number one. It's just a great song. Why don't we just play it? I'm talking about it enough. Let's play it. I'm listening to saying Ice Man. Play the song. This is Tail <laughs> Lights and Dust. Lance Stinson, former number one on the top forty new country chart. You got interviews with the Ice Man. Man, that ain't right. 
But you do what you gotta do just to pay that stack of bills off. Well, when Friday rolls around, we're gonna blow this town when it hits five o'clock. Grab all the girls who wanna have fun, fill the cooler full of cold ones. Yeah. Summer night. Fire blazing, cane raising, maybe even some love making, howling at that full moonlight. Gonna crank some hank up to ten, hang out with all my rowdy friends, get a feeling alright. Watching that clock counting in minutes, pretty soon, baby, we're gonna be living, talking about the good life. Lance Stinson, former number one song, top 40 new country chart, Tail Lights and Dust. Welcoming Lance, man. I appreciate it. I know you're busy. You just came oh, back man. from L.A., didn't you? We yeah, were in L.A. last week, and we flew back into Tennessee on Friday, and uh, we had a couple shows up in Tennessee that were great shows, and, and I want to give a shout-out to all the people that come out and supported us out there. We had an awesome time, and we were I come back home, and I was home for one, one day, and then uh, we come back up to Nashville, and we've been here for a couple of days, and now I'm heading back home, and I'm going to have a little, a, little, a little bit of time off. Not a lot, just a little bit of time off. And we got some shows coming up. And uh, But hey, I want to say thanks for everybody out there voting every week, you know, especially for that song, Tell Lights and Dust. And, you know, because without them, it would have never gotten there, you know. That's right. for sure. Right, man. It's that and, and just the, the work you put into it. And, you know, oh, yeah. in a little bit in the show, we got another song you got on the, the chart that's fixing. Mm-hmm. To head to number one, and you'll be one of only the few artists to have two separate number one songs, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Like I said, it's, it's all about the song, and it's about the writing, whoever wrote the song. It's got to be a good song, but it's all about it's all about the fans that get out and support the song and, and the DJ to get out and, and play the record. You know, if, and what for y'all guys, that, you know, we, we wouldn't have a job, that's for sure. Right. So Ex- we, we exactly. really appreciate everybody doing what they do. I mean, the fans work just as hard at this thing as we do. You know what I mean? I think that's what's making it, su- making it success out of all of it my stuff and all the stuff that we do out on the road, you know, people coming out to the shows, buying the tickets and, and uh, spending their money to keep us out on the road and to pursue our dreams, you know, right. making music, you know. Right. It, it's funny you say that with the fans too, because even social media, you know, even last night I was on Twitter a little bit and, uh, you know, I see you getting retweeted and, oh, play oh, this, yeah. Iceman, can you can you play this? And, and the interaction you have with the fans, I mean, that's right. that just shows the dedication not only on their part, but on yours to to oh, show absolutely. them how you appreciate well, I, it. I love I love to interact with them, you know, because I, I love the social media thing. You know, I, I'm it's one I think is a really great thing. That I'm glad that somebody came up with that idea to do that kind of thing. But, you know, you get a little more interaction, you know, one on one kind of thing. Because back in the day, to to, to see us, we'd, you'd have to come to the show to see us. You know what right. I mean? Right. But now you got this thing where you can just tweet us or Facebook us or or whatever and get in contact with us. And 
it's an awesome tool. It's an awesome tool. And for whoever out there is not doing it, need to get you one and do it. Because I'm telling you, it will make a world of difference. It gets your music heard by people. And, you know, to get your music out there for everybody to enjoy. Right. And and, and what it's big about that, and you mentioned that, is, man, you put on a heck of a show in Bristol at the Motor Speedway in August when I was there. And, did, and to be and able to bring that, out, oh, yeah. thank you for having me, man. I had such a blast, man. You were playing right in front of the Speedway, and people are lined up down the street. But you're right about social media because, you know, people that were there got to see it. But That's right. by having social media, I mean, we were able, even myself, you know, putting it on your website, on your Facebook, mm-hmm. on your Twitter, and people could actually see what you have going on or when you post different videos. It keeps mm-hmm. them involved if they can't get to a show. So when you get to where they are, they're dying to get to one. That's right. That's, that's absolutely right. You know? Right. And uh, and you can't, I don't say you can do without it, to be honest with you. I don't know how we did it all them years without it. Right. No, <laughs> you're, abso- you're absolutely right. Now, tell us a little about what got you to where you are. I mean, maybe some of the, not only the trial and tribulations of you getting – you know, to where you're going, but just how did you get there? You know, when you were playing music, did you, did you have other, you know, you mentioned the other band, but you know, Mm -hmm. some of the gigs you had to play and maybe some of the people you opened up for to get to where you're getting today. Oh, well, we, we did a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff, cool stuff coming up as kids. You know, we've, we played every little honky tonk dive and festival that we could. We, if they would just let us get on stage and play, you know, we didn't, we didn't do it for the money. We just did it because we love to play music. You know what I mean? And, and, we were just honored to be there to have the opportunity to do it, you know, and we were just out and, uh, we were playing this festival and this lady had said, you know, we've got this show coming up for the, the first person I wrote up for was Ty Herndon, George Dukas and Shelly Wright. We're doing, they were doing a Walmart tour. Well, it was coming through our town and the lady said, we'd love to have y'all out guys. Just, you know, get out there and even do your, Hey, and that was the, the biggest thing for us, I guess, for our jump start when we were kids. I mean, we were all like 16, 17 years old and, uh, man, it was, it was great. You know, and learned a lot. You know, and then we got on down and, and I met some guys, and, and we got out there. And I got to do some shows with Luke Bryan, which I've known Luke for a while. You know, he's wow. from Georgia, too, and he mm-hmm. went to school in Statesboro. We all played the same bars, and I got to do some shows with him. And then when I got to do some shows with him, I also got to do some shows with Brantley Gilbert, Cole Ford, uh, Jamie Johnson, Red Akins, Randy Hauser, Lee Bryce. I mean, there's just wow. tons of them. And it, and it kind of just kind of snowballed. You know, one guy had us on his tour, and he said, and yeah, my buddy's going to be coming down your way, you know, we're gonna, I need to hook you up with him, and, and we hooked up with you know a couple of different promoters that were promoting all those shows, and that's how we got in on those shows. And it was just by being at the right place at the right time. And 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 you know if I hadn't made that relationship back in the day with you know a lot of those guys, when we were all out beating the roads trying to make our thing happen, you know I probably wouldn't have been there. Right. You know, yeah. and uh, and it's all about you never know who the person might be that you're talking to today. You right. know what I mean? Yet, and that's what I always tell everybody. Right. You know, if people have nothing good to say, it's best not to say nothing at all. I yeah, you know? I, I'm a big. You don't fan never know that. who that person might be tomorrow. That exactly, you know I mean? exactly. You know, because I remember back when Luke was playing the same clothes I was playing, and Brandon was playing the same clothes I were I was playing. You know, and and, and I made friends with them. You know, I'm just glad I was in that same little area with them. Craig Campbell is another good friend of mine. He's from right down the road from where I'm from, and uh, and we just stayed friends all these years. Wow. You know? That's that's the thing to do, and and like I said, I, I I always say that man, one of the good guys in this business, and somebody I'm glad to call not only play your music, but glad to call you a friend, man, because I, oh, I love everything you are you're a dear doing, friend man. of mine, my friend. Love the love everything sure. you're doing. Let's let's play another song. You tell me a little. We're gonna Absolutely. play "Hold My Beer." Tell us a little awesome. about it. Well, I'll tell you about this song. This song is a song written by Galen Griffin, and actually Luke Bryan was a writer on this song too, and uh, I heard the song and. And at the time, Luke wasn't going to be able to use it for his album, and I was getting ready to cut my first album, my demo album in Nashville. And I was like, man, I really love that song. And and he told me to, to go with it. So we took off with it, man. And, and that song probably did more for me to get me to where I'm at now with my music career than probably anything that I've done. Wow. You know, because it was one of those songs back where I'm from. And, you know, around here, there's not just where I'm from, there's a lot of small towns where everybody rides dirt roads and mm-hmm. has a good time. And, and we've all heard that before. We all have one of those crazy friends that always says, hey, hold my beer. Watch uh-huh. this, because he's going to do something crazy. <laughs> you know, we've all been there, because I mean, everybody can relate to it, because everybody knows somebody that said that before. Right, you know? right. Well, so it, that song kind of branded us down there as, you know, a good old boy's just like them. That's you know? it. And I, and I think that's important. Well, that's, why don't we play it then? This is Lynn oh. Stinson, Hold My Beer, Iceman, Interviews with the Iceman. <laughs> You say I won't, 
but I will. I'll drink a moonshine straight from the steel. I tore off a leaf of backer, smoke it right there out in the field. I couldn't hunt without a light. Take off a run and ride into the night. I find the leanest, meanest, biggest, baddest boy and start picking up fire. Another crazy thing on my list I'll be either coming back Or giving St. Peter a kiss No, I ain't scared I ain't afraid Might be the last word you hear me say Hang around and you'll be bound to see something You don't want to miss Oh, my beer, watch this there at the bar, blue eyes, the light of the dark, a double fist and top twist into a tall boy PBRs. Well, all my boys say, You ain't got a shot, cause her man's tougher than a concrete block. I said, Now give me 30 minutes, we'll be rocking in the parking lot. That was Lance Stinson's Hold My Bear interviews with the Iceman, talking to my man today. You know, I, I tell you what, Lance, you got a lot going on. Are you going to be playing Bristol again soon, man? I had such a good time there. Uh, we, we were got some stuff in the works, and, and, and they're wanting us back, and we're just trying to get the uh, our schedules to, to work it out because I most definitely want to play there. Wow, okay. Again, I really enjoyed that. And, and we've got a few of the other racetracks that we've been working with that we're trying to put some shows together at, too, during the races. So, uh we may be doing a little bit of a NASCAR tour next year, and I hope it, hope it, everything works out where we can. That's for sure. It, wow. it, it's an awesome. You know? I, I hope it's it does awesome too, because I yeah, I'd be looking forward to attending oh, some awesome, of that. Yeah. What else? What else is in store? I know when we we caught up uh, not too long ago, you had some other stuff you were working on and songs yeah, you were I'm, writing. I'm, a couple I'm really, I really like. Really, I mean, we're still going to be out playing shows the first of the year, but I'm really trying to focus a lot of my attention and a lot of my stuff on trying to finish writing some songs and, and getting the album that we've been working on for a while finished. And I just got through writing a really cool song that I really want you to hear and, uh, and with a friend of mine called Nate Canyon that I actually got to play the Ryan Auditorium last night for the first time, which wow. was uh, was an honor, and I was glad I happened to be in town so I could check it, go check it out and be there for it while well, he played the show for the first time. And, uh, and I think it's going to be one of those songs that's going to really surprise people but uh, I think people will really like it too, though. So we'll, uh, I'm really excited about getting that one, getting that one cut, and getting the studio and getting it done. And uh, and I got some other stuff that we've written, and, uh, and I think it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a great fit for the album. I think people are gonna really enjoy, not just a few songs, but every song of the whole album. And that was my idea going into it. I don't want to have three or four good songs on a ten song album. I want to have ten great songs. I want them to like everyone on the album, you know, because there's. If they're going to buy the album, I want them to spend their money on something that they're really spending their money on that's worth it. Right, you know? right. And so. now when when can we expect that? Is there any tentative date on we're, when you plan on releasing hoping, it? We're hoping for the end of summer, first of fall. We're hoping to have everything done, and uh, we're hoping to have a date, you know, by, you know, the first of spring probably to have a date that, hey, this is going to be our release date. But uh, we're hoping to have it done by the end of summer. 
at the latest early fall. Great. Well, I'll be looking for that, man. I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. Uh, we are too, man. It's it's been a labor of love, that's for sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's the best way, isn't it? No, it no. is. It is, you know. And uh and and it's kinda of turned into been a little more of a challenge for us, but the, and the, the, my friend that's producing the record with me, he's like, man, we got we got all these songs. If we can go and finish this thing, I'm like, they're all great songs, but it's just not. I want it to be, like I said, I want it to be perfect. I mean, I know it ain't gonna be completely perfect, but I want to get as close as we can to it. So when they buy that album, when they put it in, they listen to it, they're like, holy crap, you yeah. know, right? This, this whole record is awesome. That's you know it. what I mean? That's what I want them to feel when they buy that, and I'm, I want them to think, I'm glad I bought this whole record, you right. know. Right, because well, I, mean, I, I want them to love it. You know what I mean? That's the way to be, and I, I know you're not going to disappoint, man. I, I heard some of your some of your other stuff too. You made me hear, and I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a song you have on the top forty that uh, has been in the top ten forever. It's hanging in the top five. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that this song's going to get to number one. It's got a lot going on. Tell us a little about it. The name of the song is Whiskey. Well, actually, that song come about when I was working on my first record, the Hold My Beer album, and we didn't, <clears throat> at the time when I heard it, we had just about finished the record. We actually had finished it up, and it was actually in, getting ready to be in the mastering. And I heard the song, Craig Campbell's wife wrote that song with another friend of mine called Rick Tiger. Mindy Campbell was her name. And uh, and I was like, man, I love that song. We've already finished what we had going on. And I'm like, you know, I said, you know, I'm going to hold on to it. Well, while we were looking, you know, writing stuff for this album, I was like, you know, it kept coming around and coming around. Well, the, and one of the publishing companies pitched it to us again. And I'm like, man, I already know that song. I love that song. And I'd actually, it kind of <laughs> slipped through the cracks on me on the beginning of working on this record that we're working on now. And I'm, and it, I guess it was just fate for me to cut that tune, you know, for two years later for it to come down the road again <clears throat> and be pitched to me. And I'm like, I just got to do it. Okay. Okay, cool. I just got to do it. Well, I'll tell you what, let's, yeah. um, let, let's do this. Let's play the song Whiskey, number three on the top 40 New Country Countdown with the Iceman, Lance Stinson, Whiskey. I was sitting at the bar, looking at myself, looking at myself in the mirror. When the bartender poured me one more shot of whiskey And said, man, I'll just leave this right here He set the bottle down, but it was running out All that's left won't fill this glass Might have look and I'm out of cash Running out of reason she would leave she took the kids, took her clothes, not so much as a goodbye no. So the whiskey ain't the only thing running out on me. I'm as empty as this bottle. Try not to think about, try not to think about her. And the clock upon the wall Says it is last call But I ain't drink enough to drown her Tears should be pouring down But they're running out All this left won't feel this glass Might have luck and I'm out of cash Running out of reason she would leave she took the kids, took her clothes Not so much as a goodbye no So the whiskey ain't the only thing Running out on me She took the kids, took her clothes Not so much as a goodbye no No, the whiskey
Okay, that was Whiskey Lance Stinson. Iceman talking to Lance Stinson today. And um, I appreciate your time, brother. I know you're busy. Oh, brother, just to... thank you for for even having me on your show. And, and thank you so much for even giving us the opportunity to spin my records on your radio it, station. It, it's man. an honor. And it's I, an honor for you to do that for us. We do appreciate it. Thank you. And I and I know even um, you're going to be performing at my CMA Fest event, which is going to be oh, a big yeah, treat, I'm, and I'm, You know, that's one gig that all the guys in the group and me are looking forward to probably <laughs> more than any this year. Yeah. And because well, uh, – <laughs> and Chad, my guitar player, he's played for a couple of different artists, and uh, and he's played CMA Fest before. I've never this be my first time, and and I'm really really looking forward to. Well, it. I'm looking That's forward for sure. to having you there, hey, Lance. Where can the fans find you? Uh, social media, website. Just give us some of the links. Where can they buy some of your music? And <clears throat> well, if you want to go and, and and actually you get tour dates there, you can buy T-shirts and hats, CDs, koozies. Uh, you can download, if you want to just do the downloads, you can download the music. Just go to LanceStenson.net, and you can get all the information you want there. Uh, you can order stuff online, and have, we'll mail it, you know, have it be mailed straight out to you from there. <clears throat> you can also go to Amazon.com and download some of our stuff. You can go to uh, to iTunes and download it. Uh, you can actually go to Reverb Nation and buy some of the stuff there, too. Great. And uh, you can you can stay in contact with us on Reverb Nation, Twitter, Facebook, Bands in Town. Uh, and they're all we're all over the place. If there's a social media app, we got it. <laughs> well, that's the way to go, <laughs> sure. brother. Well, I appreciate right, it, sure. man. It's an honor to have you in. Thank you for your all time, right. and uh, I look forward to uh, very exciting times for you ahead, Lance. Right, thank absolutely. you so much, man. You have a great day. Thank you too, man. That's an honor. Thank you again, buddy.